Hi, my name is Monique Teal. I'm a senior campaign director with the Daily Coast. Um, last week, I guess it was just last week, uh, we put a call out to our members to ask them to um, help address the voter suppression that has happened in North Dakota and uh, of American Indians specifically. Um, and as it turns out, our members really responded to that and are very frustrated and angry by what they are seeing um, and decided to show up in a very big way. Um, and so I'm actually here in North Dakota with a small team to meet some of the folks on the ground who are doing the work, who are making sure that American Indians are able to get their tribal IDs uh, and are able to cast their votes um, because their voices matter and this is where they live and they get to be part of this democracy also, regardless of what Republicans are trying to do. Um, so I would actually, I'm actually gonna turn over the interview, um, but I am here with one of the organizers who is working on the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe Reservation um, to make sure that we get out the vote. And so if you wanna go ahead and tell us your name and where you're from. Hi, my name is Nicole Montclair Donaghy and I, am an enrolled citizen of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. I grew up right here in Fort Yates, North Dakota, um, but I am based out of Bismarck. Cool. Um, tell us why you're doing this work. I'm doing this work because it is important to me as a native person. It's important to my children's future um, to make sure that we have people that are representative of our, our interests and that we are not being left behind and that we have a voice um, in any election um, and that you know we have our right to vote. My dad was born in uh, 1930 in Elbow Woods, North Dakota. Six years prior to that, we were allowed citizenship um, in the United States of America. And so my grandmother lived most of her life as a non-citizen of the United States. And so my ancestors, my grandmothers, our grandfathers, we, they fought and they died for our right to vote. Um, whenever there was um, a call to action for any kind of military-based war, you know, it was our people that always stood up because we always wanted to defend this land first, no matter who it belonged to or who laid claim to it. And so it's our right to uh, exercise our sovereignty as individual tribal members and use our voice and empower our communities by voting. Yes. <laughs> uh, I might start crying in the middle of this interview. Just roll with it. It'll be fine. <laughs> if you cry, I cry. So. <laughs> um, so before we came in and started doing this interview, you were telling us about some of the things that you were seeing on the ground around voter suppression. Mm -hmm. Can you just kind of recap some of the highlights that you were sharing earlier? So there has been, what it seems, a, um, a huge push to limit participation by Native Americans in North Dakota to vote in the 2018 election. Uh, in 2016, it was the Native vote that elected our current senator. Um, she won by 3,000 votes, and I'm not making this a partisan issue, but um, that shows how, how powerful our vote is here in North Dakota. As Native people, we can be a powerful voting bloc. Um, some of the things that I've seen since I started working is that there has been closing of precincts uh, within the Fort Berthel Reservation. Um, we've, along me with one of uh, the people I'm working with in Standing Rock, we've gone to the county office in Fort Yates and we haven't seen the 911 coordinator. Um, the state clearly laid out that addresses, physical addresses need to be um, verified by the 911 coordinator who has a full-time job as a sheriff here in, North, in Fort Yates and so we don't know um, we don't know if he has the capacity to do this type of or this much work on a large scale because people we we have PO boxes on the reservation you know we don't have street addresses mail doesn't come to our house like it does in the rest of the in the rest of the country we have PO boxes because we're very rural and so um, because of that, we feel like we we are being oppressed and not given an equal chance to vote. Yeah. Um, yes, you are. <laughs> yes, we are. Um, <laughs> tell us about how you're fighting back. What are some of the things that your organization is working on to fight voter suppression and make sure a native vote gets out? So I am one of two Western Native Voice North Dakota organizers that are working to educate voters and um, turn people out to the to the polls. And I've been working in Standing Rock 
<clears throat> we've um, we've planned three events that um, where we'll bring people together and go canvassing, going door to door, getting people pledged to vote. I have cards that people will fill out at all of our events, and on election day, I will use this information and uh, and we'll contact people with their preferred method of contact and say, hey, it's election day, you ready to vote? We can pick you up if you need a ride. And so we want to be that support for the people that are living in the communities because North Dakota and Standing Rock especially is very rural. And so people don't have the means sometimes to you know, drive 50 miles one way to get to the ballot. What do you want people outside of the reservation to know about this effort and to know about the work you're doing? I want them to know that despite every effort that you know the Republican-led Congress and the Republican-led legislature is taking to suppress our vote, that we're going to vote and that we are going to empower our own people and that we have the ability to mobilize in mass numbers. They know that because they've seen the No Dapple movement and you know we have that power and we will use that power to turn out. Yeah, I th something that I really appreciate you making, connecting the dots between our um, the fact that native vote in the state has been really, really powerful and it's actually turned elections, multiple elections. And then when the Dapple fight came up, American Indians showed up in huge numbers and told us what we needed to be doing and told us to show up um, and really directed this really big fight that isn't just about one community of people, but it's actually about like our lifestyles. It's about what we're trying to do. It's about who we want to be. Um, and all of that is directly connected to them trying to take away your vote, right? Like mm -hmm. directly related to them trying to rein in the power that they're seeing from this very small group of people, really. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just thinking about like how powerful that is of like this message that I don't think they meant to do it, but they're actually saying you are a very powerful group of people and we're trying to take that away from you. And we're trying to make sure that you are less capable of doing this work that is so important, not just to you, but to all of us. Yes, and we, we recognize that. I mean, we, we know what we can do when we work together. And um, it's just gonna prove them wrong once again. I mean, one thing that, that I recognize as, as an organizer on the ground is that we're putting in all this work, we're doing voter engagement, we're doing voter education, we're in talking to people in communities um, and empowering them. But on the flip side, I, I, I surmise that you know the state will come back and say, "See, there was no problem at all mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. all of this. That <laughs> there was no voter suppression." But you know, it's because of work like Western Native Voice, the work that we do in organizing communities and empowering people in small communities and giving them their voice. That's what matters, and that's the way. That's the way we're going to build power. Cool. Well. We're proud to be a part of this effort in the way that we are, and thank you so much for doing it. You are so welcome. Thank you, and welcome to Standing Rock. <laughs>